Well, thank you so much for joining us on Yahoo. Um, obviously, today we're talking about retirement, and we did see that during COVID, a lot of people retired early, but then you also saw that due to inflation now, people are having to come back into the workforce mm -hmm. out of retirement, and it's really been taking a toll on fixed incomes. In fact, 20% of Americans between the age of 55 and 64 said that they're actually delaying retirement because of inflation, according to Go Banking Rates. As you speak to some of your constituents, how would you characterize how American retirees are doing at the moment? Well, certainly the number one topic back home is the cost of groceries and gasoline, the, the cost of rent. So whether you're retired or a, a young married couple with two kids, um, that, that inflation is, is absolutely a social injustice and it hits them, impacts them more than anybody. And the challenge right now is this double whammy. Whatever the peak of your retirement account's value was, it's now about 20 to 25% less. And then on top of that, inflation, you know, over two years is probably 13%, 8% of the past year, 5% the year before. So at the end of the day, you only have about 70% of your purchasing power. So you were counting on your, 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 uh, your nest egg to be this big and all of a sudden it's this big. So it's, it's a huge problem right now. And we know that there are, there are 20 million Americans who are actually nearing retirement, or those who perhaps, if they want to get an early start, obviously they've lived through different kinds of financial crises and they're seeing what some of their parents are perhaps are going through. Talk about the most significant changes that the Rise and Shine Act in the works in the Senate brings and what the Secure 2.0 um, Act adds to it as well. Right, so this uh, Rise and Shine Act in the Senate, what its goal was to, is to number one, is to give employees and employers more flexibility, more, more options, more transparency. And what I really liked about it is this rainy day fund. So I'm a big Dave Ramsey fan. My wife and I took that early on. We teach it at our church. I, mean, I don't teach it, but our friends teach the course. Uh, so setting up a rainy day fund. So this would allow some, uh, pro pro some uh, more flexibilities in setting up that rainy day fund of three to six months of cash. Uh, but, all, but it's all just um, spinning in the wind, if you'll forgive me, right now with inflation where it is and with uh, the, the stock market down so much, that it's just not gonna do any good. We can't do it, we could do it, we try and try, we're putting fingers in the dikes, but the real problem is inflation and the stock market. So for people who are wondering about the provisions in the Rise and Shine Act, how would you describe how it impacts them? What can they expect? Well, you know, first of all, it's going nowhere. You know, this was not a, not a priority for this president uh, or the Senate. Uh, so it was turned into more of a messaging bill. It, its opportunities were to, to give more flexibility, and, and especially if your people are taking out uh, their funds as a as, as a, a one chunk of the retirement plan all at the same time is to set some protections around that. I think people are probably leaving some money on the table when they take out a, a mass lump and we were trying to protect the consumer, so, so to speak. So there were good things in it, but, I'm, but basically it had nothing to do uh, with carbon. So therefore it's not a priority for this president or this or leader Schumer. So I want to talk about you obviously proposing this, this study when it comes to retirement savings there. What is it that you're hoping to achieve and what would you like people to really do with the results of the study as well? Right. So think about the reference time of the, when we were offering this amendment. So we're considering a bill about retirement and maybe six months ago. And even then, I was much more concerned about inflation than I was trying to set up these perfect retirement plans. So the purpose of that amendment was to point out to my colleagues that inflation was the true problem. So I was going to hopefully set up a proactive uh, study of how inflation would, it, would uh, affect retirement plans. But guess what? Now we can do a retrospective study. So the retrospective study is just is about everything we're talking about today. How 13% inflation, the additive inflation over the two years, has impacted your purchasing power of the dollar and eventually how it impacted the value of your, stock, your stocks as, as well. So that was the purpose of it. But clearly this is something that you're very passionate about. How did you come to be so passionate about this? What were really the driving forces behind you moving forward on this? Oh, you know, I, I think it was the right thing to do. Sort of it was a bipartisan opportunity. I'm part of this, I'm a sandwich generation person. So I've got parents that are certainly retired. And at the same time, I've got kids with young families. So, you know, whenever we have opportunity to help, help people out to, to make their lives a little bit more comfortable than we want to do it. Um, I think the transparency is always good, so I think that was a great part of the bill. Now, of course, once lawmakers, everyday Americans, employers are sort of wondering how all of this plays out for them. If you're an employer and you're, and you're seeing some of these provisions 
coming to pass? What messages do you have for them about what they can expect? Are you saying if, if this would pass? Yes. If, okay, so first of all, it's going nowhere. Uh, it's, it's, dead, it's dead at this point in time. We're running out of days to pass that it was not a priority uh, for the Democrat Party. But if it would have passed, I think it would have given employers more opportunities, more, uh, more options, if you will. And you certainly, I'm not a financial expert, so I think these, if you're a small business or a big business, you would use your HR people to say, how can we design a better retirement plan? But what I was really excited about was this rainy day fund, is how could you help your employees set up this rainy day fund? Because we all do have a rainy day at some point in time. Maybe it's you lose your air, your air conditioner, maybe a hurricane hits and you lose uh, all, your, all your, uh, your, your range, your, your washer and your dryer. And so as you look at some of the other provisions of Secure 2.0, what really stands out to you as what could be potential game changers for Americans who are looking at the cost of living, who are looking at retirement? Yeah. Well, you know, unfortunately, with 13% inflation over the last two years, there's just not much in there that could be a game changer. That's the real problem here. The real problem is inflation and the stock market tanking because of horrible policies coming out of the White House. Policies that, that drive up the cost of energy, policies that drive up the price of groceries, and policies that drive up the cost of housing. So th this would have been a small piece of the puzzle. It, it could have helped people, uh, but right now uh, the, the problem is inflation then the problem is just the, the lack of financial security people have. So is there any hope in terms of perhaps harmonizing what we see in Secure 2.0, Rise and Shine, and um, in, ter like in terms of um, seeing how those might at some point get harmonized or some point see some movement? I know it's difficult in a midterm election year as we do get so close to oh. it. Yeah. Any, any sort of optimism that you see as a path forward, perhaps, <laughs> with retirement saving? Well, I, I wish there was. Uh, but, but I can just, just be pretty frank here and, and tell you that there's just not a conversation right now. Right now, we're just trying to keep the government open. We're living from crisis to crisis. And what the, the big concern is, the White House is not reversing any of its policies. That's why I've said since, you know, over a year and a half ago, inflation is not transitory. It's going to continue to get worse. And if you were able to wave your political wand, what would be your top five priorities that you would want the administration to focus on that would be the most beneficial to retirees? Yeah, you know, I, I think number one, of, of course, is inflation. So the drivers of inflation, like I said before, are energy, food, and, and housing. So what policies could, could, could decrease the cost of energy? Well, that would be given more flexibility to American energy companies to set American energy free. When it comes to the cost of groceries, this president has declared a war not only on American energy, but also on American agriculture, which is driving up the price of food production. When it comes to the price of housing, the supply disruption has been created by this president paying people more to stay at home than to go back to work. So we need policies that would get people to go back to work rather than to stay home. So that's where I would start. I mean, it is tough because obviously for a lot of people, their nest egg is in their home. But as we've seen house prices go up, it means people want to sort of hold on to their equity and not move. And that's really not also helping with the housing crisis. In terms of the cost of living then, do you have any expectations then as you look at what's happening with inflation and some of the stickier parts that perhaps there will be some relief that we will see inflation start to temper down anytime soon. No, not at all. I, I mean, again, the, is, the president is doubling down on his policies that have cost inflation. And we have a president that don't even recognize that there's inflation. Look, inflation, the cost of living is up 8% compared to a year ago, which is up 5% compared to the year ago before that. And you have a president who's saying inflation is up just about an inch. We have a president who says that the price, the, the, the stock market value has no relevance to, American, to Americans, American retirees as well. So unless, the, unless there's a huge change up here, inflation is going to continue. And we're really getting this double whammy of quantitative tightening uh, al along with these regulatory policies that are driving up the cost of living. So then obviously then if you're saying this is, this is dead in the water in terms of the policies for, for what we're seeing with retirement savings, what advice would you have for people then who essentially, at least for now, will have to take their retirement planning into their own hands? Um, get out and vote in November to change the policies uh, of, the, of the White House, which is killing the value of your retirement plan and that's driving up in, inflation. Look, in, uh, elections do have consequences. Um, and, and certainly, you know, what advice would I give, give my parents? Don't make any big changes. Uh, don't try to get rich quick. 
go take a Dave Ramsey course, uh, it, use a trusted financial advisor. I'm a physician. Uh, you would want to come to me to get advice on uh, if you, I'm an OBGYN, if you had breast cancer, ovarian cancer, you'd want to come to me and get advice about that. Uh, your retirement plan uh, is your nest egg, your home and that retirement account are, are probably your greatest assets. So find a trusted person that you, could, that you have a long-term relationship with uh, that's not this get rich quick scheme uh, and, and make a plan for, for you uh, for the, and enjoy your time. Enjoy your time with your family. Focus on things that matter. The spending time with your family, doing things that you enjoy. And it's not always money doesn't buy the happiness. Doing fun things shouldn't necessarily be the most expensive things to do. We, should, we certainly hope not. A big thank you, Senator Marshall, for joining me this afternoon on Yahoo. Thank you so much. Of course. Thank you.